Hey guys, Hunter and Lee Labrada here today to take you through an awesome leg workout. The workout's gonna aim to A, start with the calves because it's an often neglected muscle, so I've chosen to prioritize it by putting it first at the beginning of this workout. From there, we're gonna move on to leg extensions, and then moving on to pre-exhausting the quads, hitting some pause squats, and then finally finishing up with some cable stuff like a deadlift. Now that we've given you the rundown of what we're doing today, let's go get after it. You ready to get after it? Get oh, some yeah. legs, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> So for our first exercise today, we're gonna to be doing a standing calf raise. We're gonna do five sets of approximately 15 to 20 repetitions. We're going for a full stretch and a full contraction when doing the reps. You'll see me and Lee as we perform them. The top of the rep, it's almost like a double clutch. We'll get up there as high as we can and then we'll really squeeze and maybe only get an inch higher, but we're still really, really forcing the issue. We're forcing the contraction at the end of the rep. Throw a quarter on? Yep. Okay, so you're gonna notice that when he gets to the top of the movement, he stalls for a second, and then he gets another little pop out of that. And that's to get that extra little bit of contraction, you know, which really a lot of times makes a difference between a good set and a bad set. When you're doing a standing calf raise, you're training your gastric nemus, which is your calf muscle, the muscle that people typically think your entire calf is. In order to keep the effort on the gastric nemus, you're gonna to wanna to do a couple things. First, you're gonna keep your quads tensed. What that's gonna do is it's gonna keep your legs straight, and then also, at the same time, you're gonna to wanna to keep your glutes contracted. What that'll do is it'll completely isolate the calf as well as take the ability away for you to bend the leg and shift the focus from the gastric nemus to other parts of the calf. You're gonna notice that he's very controlled through the full range of motion. Very, very important, especially if you're handling heavier weights, when you come down to the bottom, not to hyperextend because you could end up wrecking your Achilles tendon there. When you factor in the pace we're moving at, there's not a lot of time for recovery, so it really starts to get to be a pretty severe burn. It's not comfortable, but it shouldn't be comfortable. You know, you're trying to make the muscle adapt to something. If it was easy, it wouldn't need to adapt. All right, one more set. Okay, Hunter, let's go. So what's next? Let's move on to seated calves. Let's go get them. Like I stated previously, when you're doing standing calf raises, you're training the gastric nemus. Whenever you move to a seated calf raise and you put a bend in the leg, you're actually using your soleus muscle. The soleus muscle runs underneath the gastric nemus, and so when you have that very developed, it actually makes your calf pop out farther and it makes you look like you have much bigger calves. So it's imperative you develop both the gastric nemus and the soleus equally. When he first started out, his calves were probably about this big round. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and so his calves were in his strong suit, but he identified that early on and he prioritized his calf training and as a result, um, you know, within a year, he had literally put almost two inches on his calves. So it was just an amazing transformation. You know, it just came from prioritizing it. And one more thing that you'll see me do that um, I've just kind of done over the years is uh, I really don't like to hold on to this. I actually almost hold on to the seat behind me or just kind of keep my hands in front of me somewhere. A, it allows me to not pull on this and cheat like most people do, and B, it kind of lets you have a straighter spine and really gets everything in line to be able to push and gets you really rigid and locked in. You know, in the old days, when you were competing, you could get away with having skinny calves, but not anymore. You know, and uh, a well-developed set of calves like Hunter has really sets off the physique. All right, two more sets. Two more sets? Yep. All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. One more. All right, let's go. Come on. Up, 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 up. Good one. Yeah. Come on. There you go. Good. All right. What's next? Move on to some leg extensions. Let's Wake go. the quads up. Let's go get it. I'm going to waddle over. <laughs> 
tricks and things to keep in mind when you're using the leg extension machine is to really get yourself set up in a proper positioning, both with the pad and the back of the bench first. Most leg extension machines these days do a pretty good job of telling you that your knee needs to be in line with the pivot on the leg extension machine. That's absolutely correct. You want to ensure you have the pad brought up enough to where you're firmly seated with your butt planted and your back able to be flat and not rounded. Another thing is, you really want to make sure you don't have this set too far back. I know a lot of people like it's a full range of motion. No, it really isn't. It's putting an extraordinary amount of stress on your patella tendon and it's taking almost all of the stress off your quads whenever you get completely wrapped back there. Something I show a lot of people whenever they're learning how to do their leg extensions is I'll make them put their fist or I'll put my fist in between their legs right here and I'll make them actually kind of squeeze the fist with their legs. What that does is it keeps the quads both faced up and firing the same. How's that feel, Hunter? Yeah. Knees feel good? Think of this almost as a concentration curl, the equivalent of a concentration curl for your thighs. Good. You want to keep your toes straight up and down throughout the rep, both at the top and the bottom. Keeping them top facing up at the top of the rep will ensure the entire quad is equally contracted and not stressing the knee or the vastus or the lateralis muscles more. Oh yeah. I'm going to be waddling here in a second. <laughs> Definitely really important that while you're training your legs, you stay stretching throughout. Really get stiff with all the blood flow and all the work you're doing, if not. Come on. All right. Woo. Last one coming up. Let's do it. All right, Hunter. Come on. Good one. All right, man. Let's do it. A couple things to keep in mind. Whenever I say pause squats, we're not going to be sitting in the hole for forever. What we're using the pause for in this workout today is to completely take away the stored energy and momentum that you have. You're not sitting in the hole for three or four seconds. You're going to get down there. You're going to be down there for maybe a second, and then you're going to explode out of the hole. All right, guys. So this first set that we're going to do is going to be a little bit lighter of a set. We're still going to consider it a working set, though. A couple things to keep in mind when squatting. You're going to want to keep a big chest, a flat back, and you're going to want to push from your heels and have a base about as wide as your shoulders. Whenever you get set up on the squat, you want to have your arms as close as you can possibly have them together while still having the bar low on your trap shelf. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create the most rigid upper structure you can have. You're gonna be really locked into place and ready to squat. Let's throw another plate on. You know, I think that the most important role of a spotter is safety first, obviously. But a spotter also adds a dimension of feedback during the set. So in other words, uh, this is a person that can help to correct minor variations in your form, obviously add encouragement, and then in the unlikely event that they get in trouble, to help them up out of the hole. One other thing that I would like to point out is that if, if you look at his feet, he's shifting his weight back on his heel, so he's pushing through his heel. And a lot of people don't do that, and they, they push from the front of the foot, which naturally throws you forward. Nice job. One more. I'm just going to leave it at this. Okay. Catch your breath. Oftentimes we get asked, well, how long should you rest in between sets of squats? Well, you go by the clock, but really the best way to go is just by your breathing. Once your breathing is normalized, then it's time to go to the next set. How are you feeling? Good. Good? All right, man. Good. Powerful. Good job. All right. Got some blood in those things, don't you? Oh, yeah. All right, let's get our breath and move on to stiff legs. 
Our last exercise today is gonna to be a variation of a stiff-legged deadlift using a rope and a cable. What this allows us to do is take some of the stress off the lower back and keep constant tension both on the glutes and the hamstrings, as well as allows for even bigger pinch than you'd get from a traditional stiff-legged deadlift. So, let me show you what it looks like. So a lot of guys will basically spend all of their energy doing their quad work, you know, working on their thighs, and then they're exhausted by the time that they get to their hamstrings, you know, with very little left. You know, so um, I, I think that it's definitely been an area that's been overlooked. I think that for balanced leg development, you have to have great hamstrings to go with your quads. Definitely. Yeah. So as you can see, whenever you're doing them, it really allows you to get a good stretch and then being a cable, it really allows you to pull through and have tension throughout the whole motion. Good, Hunter. You'll see at the top of every rep, you really want to get a good squeeze and contraction both with your glutes and your hamstrings. All right, let's knock out this last set. All right, guys, so that's all we have for you today. If you have any questions about this workout or nutrition or exercise in general, be sure to shoot me a message on BodySpace. My username is Hunter Labrada, all lowercase, no spaces. And for more great articles and video like this, keep on coming back to bodybuilding.com.